Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and as always for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. In today's episode, we are continuing on finally with our X9 Draft League content. It is going into week six, so last week was week five, but there was scheduling issues um, and um, I apologize for myself that there was no content covering that so we are going up against steve and pokemon cast this week he is the man himself behind the super effective podcast big fan myself so i'm sure a lot of you have heard of it and uh, it's going to be a really good game this week i'll throw his team up on the screen so you can see what uh, we're going up against this week it's going to be a very tough one it was difficult to prepare against for sure he's got the reggie alecki politor durant ludicolo duraladon crocodile Bertic, Kingdra, Moltres, Alolan Persian, and Galarian Slobro. I think he's had an amazing draft. Uh, I think, you like, you look at this team, it's got options all over the place. You've got Intimidate with the Crocodile, that's great. You've got lots of Swift Swim abusers in there, the Ludicolo, the Bertic. Kingdra um, and things to kind of complement those those Pokemon, especially with the Moltres, all things that are giving me a hard time kind of preparing with. I think uh, I really expect Steve to kind of go with something like Regieleki, Politoed, the Durant as well, does well against the Charizard straight up. Uh, Ludicolo, probably not. Uh, I would, I think we'll probably see Kingdra uh, and I think we'll see Moltres and Galarian Slowbro. Uh, that would be my best guess although we might have curveballs thrown at us because you don't know what they're thinking and uh, the best way to get an idea of what they're thinking and their perspective is obviously by checking out their side of the battle so a little plug here as always uh steve's uh channel pokemon cast and all his socials and things are linked down in the description below so if you want to check out the other side of the battle after this one then please do and uh, definitely if you have done that let me know your thoughts on the battle today and um, obviously getting on to our team as well something i wanted to kind of just throw up before we started because i am aware that i've not done an analysis video this week and i do have to apologize for that again but i think if we start with it here then i can quickly go through the thought process of what we're trying to do and see if we can get any of these um little tricks kind of working today so i've opted for a weakness policy uh, venus so you can see it's very bulky here it is able to take the main kind of big attacks from Steve's threatening Pokemon. Obviously, Kingdra being one of them with Max Airstream, it's gonna be difficult to deal with. Um, and that Moltres as well, they're the two. Um, and really, you would think, oh, well, we've got Venus or Torkoal, I'm gonna want the Sun up most of the time, but that's not necessarily what I want in this match. I really want the rain up because we've got that weather ball, we can take advantage of that. If we're plus two as well with a weakness policy boost, then we're gonna be able to deal with that Moltres a lot easier, especially under Trick Room. now. It, we do have to be a very careful around the glaring slow bro obviously that has got access to trick room as well so it can reverse the trick room and it's likely probably going to have something like on tempo so it makes me not want to carry taunt really anywhere in the team because uh, i don't feel like we necessarily need it and if mimikyu can be worked well enough we should be able to get that that board position up and then venusaur in a phenomenal position so we're not generally using Venusaur like the conventional route of that chlorophyll ability even though it is going to be an option for maybe a late game if Venusaur is able to stick around so that's one option there the Mimikyu is the big one here uh, we could have went for something like Mental Herb because you've got to worry about taunt from things like especially the uh, Alolan Persian um, but at the same time if we go down that route then we leave ourselves so vulnerable to getting picked up knocked out by a combination of like what really scares me is Regieleki Durant uh, with Electro Web and then just the Max Steel Spike, which without the Bibiri Berry and without Durant on minus one, we cannot survive with Mimikyu. So we need that that berry to be able to get the Trick Room up in that situation. And again, against those two Pokemon, if we do see that, we're quite comfortable knowing if we get the Intimidate off, then we can get the Trick Room up and then we can kind of start going from there, get something like Venusaur on the field and uh, start plowing through stuff. Um, light Screen makes sense uh, because it then supports the Venusaur a little bit better. It means that we don't need to necessarily have a Cobra Berry or an Ocker Berry, which were the two other options that I was kind of looking at here. Um, so that just helps bolster everything. Phantom Force play rough going to be very good throughout this game, I feel. Did toy with the idea of Shadow Claw, but I think 
you know phantom force it gives us a turn off the field especially if we're in an awkward spot and need to just preserve mimikyu and then guarantee an att attack off the next turn get around protect it's always very useful scrafty going to be a key member of the team I have given it the cobra very here just to take those bigger max air streams and um, because again the kingdra and the um the moltres are going to cause us all sorts of issues now i could have went with stone edge here but i've got it I've got an actual little strategy going on that I think is going to work out. And it's kind of where the team started from. It's all based around Azumarill. Now, if you look at the team that Steve's got, I think it finds it very difficult to deal with the Azumarill, especially if we've got the Lightning Rod support from Rhyperia. So that's the big thing here. We obviously got to watch out for Ludicolo. Now, I'm making a big presumption that we're not going to see Ludicolo. If we do, game plan's going to have to change. and We're going to have to go a different direction. But we've got other methods to deal with stuff so it's not too bad but i think if we can get it maxed next to scrafty the intimidate's going to help it out a bunch and then what we can do is we can max starfall this is where the swagger comes into play and we kind of get around not needing belly drum then is we can max starfall swagger out on azumarill and set it up for like the late game when we're not maxed but also take advantage of it in a max situation which is quite nice benefits from the rain as well um and the, the move set we could have went for bounce here but i i thought about it again i was like i don't expect the ludic to come so let's go for super powered hits a duraladon and other members of his team uh, a lot harder and gives us the opportunity to boost our attack as well when we are maxed and um, talk all i think is super necessary in this game it disrupts the rain if we're in a bad spot it can come in and uh really kind of slow things down from that perspective um i haven't went for protect on it which is a little bit strange but i really felt like i needed all of these these attacks i think the earth power is really important for a bunch of things solar beam we're going to need it if we're going to go one-on-one -on -one late game against the polytoad we need to make sure the sun's up in that situation and then the moltres as well uh, if we're in a trick room situation ancient power is going to be super useful um to to help deal with that and then we got the pasha berry so we've got at least a little buffer when we switch talk all in to be able to take that you know so that definitely helps out and then we'll round off with lightning rod rhyperia um i've went lightning rod primarily to protect the azumaro which is such a centerpiece to this team if we see the red jaleki it's going to be a bit of a problem to deal with rhyperia kind of helps solve that the sash makes things a bit more simpler we don't have to worry about specific calcs or things happening in game to disrupt that and then i decided on metal burst as an option to play with the sash it made sense there was loads of options like ice punch for crocodile there was hammer arm we could use there was thunder punch as well fire punch if we decide to max and get the sun back up the list goes on but i felt overall metal burst is something that will maybe win us one game and that's that could be really clutch in the end so metal burst if you don't know it's um it re it's a bit like counter in miracord but it it's 1.5 damage back to the opponent whatever you've taken so if we get hit with a max uh, geyser from a kingdra we'll be able to knock out that kingdra um with the return damage from this so we can potentially knock out pretty much anything on his team uh with rhyperia in the right situation we need to make sure that that sash stays intact though that's the big thing for us so that's a big thing going forward that is the team though in a nutshell i'm excited about this week i think it's going to be really good and um we'll wait now to just get the match set up with steve and we'll be right back when we get into the game friends okay we are here we're setting up the battle um okay rules are getting decided which is good uh oh i'll decide them then it's nice to be back with x9 draft league content we've locked in with our team so we're ready to go i'm interested to see what he's brought because like i say i kind of went through what i expect to see but i could definitely see things like bear tick as well i could see things like crocodile i think they all like warrant a place on the team and like i say he's been doing very well with the team as well so wouldn't surprise me to see these ludicolo no <laughs> okay well we got ludi poly uh persian the the slow bro crocodile and um the maltres okay well i think because there's no inclusion of um the Kingdra does make it a little bit easier for us. Got to watch out for Taunt, especially from that Crocodile as well. You know, the Persian Crocodile make things quite difficult for us. Um, I think, yeah, uh, it's it's tough now because the Ludi complicates things for a, a, a Zoomeril, for sure. You know, um, and you look on face value of this and you think, well, Charizard would be a great shout here. And I did think about it a lot, but not enough to warrant a place. 
Now, I'm expecting to see something like... Maybe, you know, if he wants to stop Trick Room really, really desperately, I could see him leading, like, Persian Crocodile here. And to, to get the fake out, the faster fake out, and then the taunt off to stop Scrafty. Uh, Mimikyu getting it up. But I think I'm going to go on Mimikyu, Scrafty. I think I'm going to go Venusaur. And our last Pokemon. I get, you know... Do we go with the Torkoal? Do we allow him to get the rain up and just run with it? Or do we go with something like Rhyperia that could do a lot of work, especially with that Metal Burst? I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Rhyperia in this first one here. We'll see we'll see how it shapes up. Hope I'm not wrong about needing Azumarill here because if we don't see the Ludi, then you know it's um. It's a Zoomerel territory, but it, it's enough to kind of scare me off. We got another game after this, for sure. Guaranteed, whatever happens. Good luck to Steve, and uh, it's going to be a really good one. Right, got Persian, we got Moltres. This is all right for us, this is all right. Fake out into the Persian, and we get ourselves a our Trick Room up. Okay, that is where we are going with this, 100%. We don't worry about the, the Max Airstream from the Moltres, because we've got the Koba. Um, and if they fake us out, then that's fine. They 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 can go for that. It means that Mimikyu's kind of left alone. We get our trick room up, and that's all that matters. Famous last words and all. <sighs> yeah, I'm not really like the thing he could do is switch in maybe um, the Slowbro here, which again I don't, I don't mind seeing the Moltres leave the field for Slowbro because then Scrafty's still in a really good spot. Um, but you see how good, like, Azumarill would have been as a lead here. So he's led pretty well in regards to knowing how kind of put off we are. I had a crazy idea about running Sap Sipper, Belly Drum, Azumarill, but... Okay, no max there. Oh, that is really unfortunate from missing the Hurricane. So we get very lucky in that turn. Very unfortunate. Out the rain, Hurricane does miss. And we're in a nice spot here where we can potentially get our light screen up. Do we want to switch in? Do we want to switch into Venusaur just yet? Or do we double up into that Persian? You know, it's a possibility. Like, we could just Drain Punch, Drain Punch, and, and play rough. I don't think we need to set our light screen up just yet. Like, the play rough Drain Punch will be enough to get the Persian. Moltres protects. So, we're going to get that double up into the Persian and uh, take an early lead here, which is always, always nice. Um... I can say the Persian taking that pretty well with that fur court ability, but I'm hoping that the player rough is going to be enough to uh, to clean up. Does connect. It, oh, it hangs on, hangs on. What EV, and that is brilliant. So the snarl coming out from the Persian uh, breaks the disguise, the main thing. Um, do you switch the Persian out and maybe keep it for, for late game? Potentially. The problem here is that we're not really taking advantage of our trick room, right? Uh, you know, I'm going to crunch the Persian and I'm going to set a light screen up. <sighs> yeah, because we're not taking advantage of our trick room. Our trick room turns are ticking down and, you know, we might not be in a position where we're able to get a second trick room up, which then makes things very difficult for us. Very difficult. Unless it is the rain core on the back and then Venusaur comes in and has a, a great time. Um... I think the hurricane miss definitely definitely makes things a little bit easier for us but we'll see how it goes see how it goes see how this plays out that persian is a beast though <coughs> all right i don't know what the Moltres. Oh, Moltres is gone gone away okay so polytod coming out okay that's fine that's fine we like that we like that we like the rain coming because we want the rain Unbeknown to him. I think the rain plays. My, oh, if this is slow, bro. This is big for us because we get the crunch. What's oh, Crooked Owl? Okay. That's that's good. Okay. That's fine. We know what we're dealing with now. Um, Should have just drain punched. Would have been better. Crunch is going to do minimal damage. Minimal. Okay. All right. Well, we get the light screen up, which is useful. I think now is a good time to get something like Venusaur onto the field. Um, could we pull a double switch? Probably not. 
Probably not. I think someone following me on uh, on um, Twitch, so thank you very much. <laughs> I think we just play rough into the crocodile. Got to worry about maybe weakness policy there as well, you know. And if it maxes and then goes like max quick into our um, into our Venu slot, then we're uh, not going to enjoy that too much. But you've got to think you probably want to get rid of the trick room from the Mimikyu before anything else. You know, you want to get rid of that. Um, so there's no trick room possibility like going forward in the match. It makes things a bit more streamlined for him. Kukadao going to switch out. Moltres coming in. Yeah, okay. Well, I don't, I, again, I don't mind this too much. I really, like, yeah, it's not it's not terrible. Skull coming out into Mimikyu. That's all right. And the player rough going to do minimal damage to that Moltres. Okay. So, I think now we start by going for big damage into that Politoed. We switch out into... Scrafty, because I want to keep Mimikyu around for later. I want to be able to get that Trick Room up if we can. Uh, we've got to remember that the Persian's still kicking around as well, so that's going to make things a little bit tricky for us, of course. But I think Mimikyu is quite important to us. Our whole, and if we can get rid of the Polytoad, like, I don't expect the Polytoad to stay in here. But the thing is, with that residual damage kind of starting, hopefully this turn as well is where they activate our weakness policy. <laughs> Um, and with the light screen up, it makes it a bit easier to kind of handle the Moltres. So, let's see. Don't think anything's switching out here. Polytub probably just protecting, I guess, if it's not switching out. Might see Helping Hand Hurricane, though. So, we're pulling the trigger first on Venu. Because I think this residual damage is going to be so, so, so imperative to us. So, let's see. If we can make the Venu count in the rain... Normally wants the sun. And it doesn't even matter if the, 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 the Moltres decides to go for the sun. Uh, it sets the sun up because it can. Um, Polytope protecting, which is fine. Super fine. Get that G-Max Vine Lash off, which is what we want. It kind of makes it difficult for the Persian to come back on the field as well because it's so low health. Um, and we'll see a hurricane, I reckon, now. Ooh, check button. Okay. Persian comes in here, that's ideal. I think it'll be the Crocodile though. Um, it made more sense. And then a Hurricane from that Moltres into Venusaur, which we should take pretty comfortably, considering it's not maxed. But they may chase down the Mimikyu here, you know? It's like the thing where they're like, all right, let's get rid of the Mimikyu, let's get rid of the Trick Room option, so that's not a possibility going forward. It's gonna be the Persian, so the Persian gonna, gonna be able to say goodbye to that going forward um, get that weakness policy procced which is exactly what we want and now we can smack that Moltres this next turn with a um, with a big with a big bad water attack and probably put it in range to kind of take it take it down maybe if it doesn't max but then you can't really underestimate the crocodile as well the problem is obviously we've got the scrafty out on the field trick rooms ended which isn't great but again we do have fake out and our disposal. So at least we can fake out this next turn. And we still got Rhyperia in the back as well. We've got to think about that. Like the big priority for us is probably getting rid of Politoed. Rhyperia can kind of, uh, it's not great against Crocodile, of course, but we do have the Metal Burst, we can kind of fall back on a little bit. And we're going to throw all our tricks out here, but Again, if we win this with, with Venus, so you've got to think, like, do we see the Ludicolo next game? I don't think we do, you know? I think the Venusaur is too much of a problem for him to uh, to bring the Ludi. So I think then we start thinking about Azumro. But we've got to concentrate on this match right now. It is the most important, of course. Um, we go for a strike into Moltres, and we'll go for that fake out into the Crocodile. We may see the Crocodile Max here because I think, again, you've got to think like Max Quake is going to benefit them right now because the, the special defense boosts are going to be like really beneficial, right? Um, and there's always the argument where you're like, hmm, do we just switch out Scrafty here, potentially? And then 
get that Intimidate onto the Crocodile a bit later. I think if we can remove the Moltres, then I don't really worry about the Trick Room too much, because then I think we switch Scrafty out um, to get the Intimidate onto the Crocodile, but it depends what this is. It is a Moltres Maxin, which is better for us, honestly, because now our Fake Out is actually meaningful. And it'll be interesting to see how much damage this does. This geyser does. So fake out, beautiful. Love it. Max airstream, I'd imagine. We should take it. Like a champ. Like a champ. Here we go. Okay, this is this is perfect. If we can remove the Moltres now, I think we win this. But I don't know. The geyser from the Venusaur. The pseudo water type. It's enough. Come on, there we go, okay, there we go. Brilliant, brilliant, okay. That makes things so much easier for us because now we just uh, literally intimidate, shuffle around. Um, and the residual damage now, gonna eat this crocodile. Make things so much easier for us. Like we just get Scrafty out, sack off Mimikyu. Um, yeah, I think we just attack into the Politoed here. Oh, do we? Yeah, we attack into the Politoed. Are they going to have enough to take down Venusaur? Is Politoed even going to outspeed Venusaur? That's the thing. Like the Crocodile, I don't think an Earthquake is going to take us down. I don't think a High Horsepower will take us down. Um, yeah, battle cancelled. So we do take the first one uh, pretty well, handily, with Venusaur. So, one up, which is great. So that worked out really well. Now... I can't rest on that at all. I think, I think, like I say, one of the things we've got to start thinking about is this next game. And I do think that Azumarill is probably the player because I think as much as Ludicolo is great, it does not want to contend with uh, the likes of... Um, it doesn't want to contend with the likes of uh, with Venusaur, you know? So I think the Azumarill Scrafty lead here is probably the way for us to go. Um... At the battle again but i think we still need to bring the venusaur as a kind of backup in case we do see the ludi because you never know what your opponent's thinking you never know how they're kind of thinking what we're going to do as well um so azumaro scrafty venu the other thing as well you know what we could potentially see is the slow brawl uh which we have to be very very careful for i'm kind of tempted to bring the Rhyperia, just because of the Metal Burst. Yeah, we'll lock in with that, we'll lock in. Because I think it gives us a guaranteed knockout onto something if we play it smartly and we can just get it onto the, the, the board. And another one, another one. If you can hear that bleeding over, I do apologize. I need to, uh, the notifications aren't uh, knocked off when I've got this open, but uh, whoever is following on Twitter, thank you so much. We are streaming later this evening. I am recording this as of now on Friday, so. Let's see, let's see what we go with. But I'm feeling, I want the Azumarill. I want to get the, I wanted to get the, the Metal Burst off. I wanted to get the Venusaur gone and I wanted to get the Azumarill gone. But obviously, you know, all these wants, it's been greedy. If we can get the Azumarill gone in this one, I'm going to be like super chuffed. And it's, the game plan's kind of worked out, which is very rewarding sometimes, you know, but it's, um, we're, we're, we're way beyond that yet we've got to get through this next one and a lot can change and we cannot underestimate what Steve is going to do because uh, we've not seen too much from his team so far Persian and Moltres perfect that's like we want this we want this we want this all day now we've got to think like what's he going to switch in what's he going to switch in I mean the hurricane as well in game one we've got to say that affected that game um, majorly like if he hits that we have got the cobra berry but at the same time it makes things very difficult for us um do we just commit do we commit with with uh with azumarill here and do we go for the swagger because i'm i don't know if i'm like super worried about the moltres i kind of am i at the same time i kind of don't want to just leave the moltres kind of to its own devices um but i'd like to get the swagger gone and like if we can get the you know so we can't underestimate the Moltres got max. Um, no, I think we go for it. I think we go for it here. 
No, I think we, let's not be greedy. Let's not be greedy. No, let let us do it. Let us do it. Let us do it. I don't think we're going to have time. We've locked in the fake out. At least we're going to max. A zoom roll here. Ah, uh, faffing round. Okay. Well, nothing switching out. I think we'll see fake out into Persian. And we'll see a hurricane into... Uh, yeah, fake out into Scrafty from Persian in a hurricane. Um, Moltres protects. Okay, well, that's 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 fine. That's fine. Uh, unless we see a parting shot. No, we see the, the fake out. Let's see, Starfall. This is the target that we went for. Take it down. Is that sashed? Or is it just an absolutely... Yeah, it's sashed. Okay. I was like, this thing's like calced like so well so well right um i can switch in scrafty flinched i think we go for the geyser which one's more powerful i need to move out of the way i need to see and uh, what's the what's the button to see more options it's 130 and that's 90 so this is the one we want into moltres and we want to go for that swagger as well into zoom roll and that kind of helps us mitigate a little bit against the parting shot if we do see that come out from the Persian here because it's a definite possibility you know um but with the misty terrain up yeah this is fine this is fine because especially I can't see the polytoad coming in I can see the crocodile coming in which the swagger then definitely helps you know I think the crocodile 100% comes in here we may see like but the Moltres not maxing either that's Politoed. Oh my god, no. We're we're going for we're going for the big rain play. What's the Moltres doing? Hurricane. Yeah. Okay, it's into Scrafty. We take that so well. And we can't be confused either because of the terrain. Now we get the geyser, and this is no way is this Moltres surviving. Right, well, that's that. We're going to get our swagger off as well. Hopefully it hits. And then that puts Azumarill at plus two. No! Damn it! <laughs> it was going to happen. It was going to happen, wasn't it? I cursed us. I cursed us. Ah, uh, that would have been so good. That would have been so good if that had been the case. But, can't complain. Slow, bro. That's the other thing. Yeah, okay. Well, we've got Rhyperia. The thing is, if it's slower than us, that makes it very difficult. That makes it very difficult. It might be better off preserving something like... Um, I mean, we can smack it with a geyser because, you know, it is boosted. I think it's better if we preserve something like Scrafty here, though. Um, and bring in, like, Venusaur. Because I, I expect... I expect the slow bro to to max here. I think, yeah, it would make more sense. The slow bro is a really good shout, you know. I just don't know how much damage we're gonna do when we're minus one, and I think it's more important that we preserve Scrafty for later in this game. Yeah, the slow bro maxing. And this is the other Pokemon that did scare me, give me, give me fears because the the max ooze boosting that Politoed. This can get quite dangerous quite quickly. And it's a great pick against, you know, a zoom roll. Not only the, the Ludi, but um There's a scald, yeah. Lena takes up pretty well. And then the geyser. At least we're gonna get another geyser off. Well, it's not bad damage. It's really not. It really isn't. If we had that this is capped. We do get plus one, but maybe I don't know if an earth power and a max geyser is going to be enough to get the slow bro. Probably not, but we can um, switch around. We can switch around for sure. We could bring Scrafty back in because we can check. The Politoed. Although the one thing that I would say is we probably like we've got to worry about um, mm, we can't protect here. Do we just lose? Do we just lose Azumarill? 
and go for another liquidation. I think we go liquidation and I think we switch back into Scrafty here because I think the Politoed protects and I think we see a max, we could see a max Mindstorm into the Venusaur. So then the Politoed's a little bit freer going forward. It's risky because if we lose Scrafty here, it's not ideal. But I think Scrafty's like bulky enough to come in and take a Scald at least. Politoed protect, let's see that max Mindstorm. Wow, that does a lot of damage. It crit. Yeah, we get very lucky. Okay, yeah, and Max Mindstorm. Okay, well, we get it. And now I think a liquidation is going to be enough to pick up that, and then we can just go for the fake out into the Politoed. The crit again is huge for us because it really hampers their ability. Like, I don't know if like two liquid. Oh, quick claw activated. There we go. Okay, love to see it. Can we take this? I don't know if we can. There's the eject button. Bye bye, Todd. <sighs> can we take this? I don't know if we can. I don't know if we can. Maybe we can. Maybe. Maybe. Persian coming back out onto the field. Quick claw. There we go. Can the assault vest do it? Nah, not enough. <laughs> Makes it difficult. But then max turns are done now, so that's that's a plus. Um, and we do have the option where we could bring in like I want to keep Rhyperia because I think Rhyperia if we can finish off the match Rhyperia versus Politoed and get the Metal Burst then it's it's, it's great really but <sighs> let's see let's see because we can just double up into the slow bar now like you know an Earth Power and a Crunch is going to be enough and I'm not like massively concerned about this Persian. Like it's really good at disrupting, but it's not going to be like putting too much damage onto the field. At least this turn by itself, anyway. You know, got to worry about foul play, of course. All those things. It's the quick claw that you worry about more than anything. You know. Touch wood, it doesn't activate again, because that will complicate things. Was it quick claw? Or was it just a quick draw ability? I don't know which one. It was too hyper moment to uh, to 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 realize what was going on, but the crunch, yeah, part psychic gonna yeah, be the be the be the one for us here. So Persian and Politoed rain stops, just ready for Politoed to come back in, and a drain punch and a leaf storm should do it, should seal it, should do. I'm being too greedy wanting the Metal Burst, but it was a nice idea, I think. Um, we could have maybe got it going. But Leaf Storm into Politoed and then Drain Punch into the Persian. That should be enough, potentially. I think we'll see Parting Shot maybe onto to Venu. Um, but with Venus, so I'm not kind of, I'm not like super worried about, about the Politoed. Otherwise, you would be, but... As long as we get rid of the Persian, I think we've, we've cracked this. Icy Wind coming out from the Persian, going to drop our speed by one point. What's this Politoed going to do? Uh, we just need one HP on that Persian, that's all we need. Get that weakness policy boost, which is nice, uh, but we'll be attacking after the Politoed now. Um, the Hypnosis coming out. Ooh, okay. Okay. No. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Nars is coming out. The uh, drain punch is going to be enough to get this Persian now, so it is going to be all right. Um, and if Venusaur stays asleep, we might be able to see, we might be able to resurrect the idea of uh, Rhyperia coming in, you know, and getting that Metal Burst off, because that'll be the next Pokemon to bring onto the field if we can, if we can do this. So we'll go for the Leaf Storm again. I think we'll just drain punch, just try and get some health back. I think they'll target down. I mean, you target down the Venusaur here, I think, but um, it also makes sense to go after the Scrafty as well. Because um, as soon as the Venusaur wakes up, it's kind of over. This Drain Punch doing nothing to this bulky Toad. Uh, we'll probably take well, maybe one more Scald. So there's time for Venusaur to wake up. Venusaur might be the one that gets the, the knockout here, maybe. We'll see. See, I kind of want it to be Rhyperia though. Come on, take down Scrafty. Allow Rhyperia to come in. 
get the burn. Get the burn. Get the burn. I'm, I'm kind of praying for my opponent. I think what we'll do is we'll try and get one more Drain Punch off. Um, and we'll protect Venusaur and try and get Rhyperior onto the field. And then we'll try and we'll try and get the Metal Burst. He might not allow us to do this, you know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. It's sure about in a bit, but it's just such a nice tech. And like Metal Burst, I've got this thing with Metal Burst where I'm like, it's such a good move. You never see it. And it is very gimmicky. And it is like a one-off. Once your opponent knows about it, then it just doesn't it just doesn't work, right? Um Venusaur wakes up, we get the protect, which is great. Scrafty will go down now, which is fine. So we get the right period. Can we do it, please? Like, let us do it. Let us do it. And then everything's kind of fulfilled, right? So Scrafty, you've done amazing. You've been a great Pokemon in this set. And Rhyperia, here we go. Let's do it. Let's just protect Venu and go. And go Metal Burst. Watch, I reckon Steve's gonna be like, nah, nah, nah. I'm gonna I'm gonna forfeit now. We get the double protect, so that's good. Okay. He's probably like, what's going on? Get this scald. Oh no, he ru ruined it, ruined it, ru it's ruined, it's ruined now, it's ruined, it's ruined, it's ruined, the hypnosis. <laughs> but I mean, we just keep clicking, um, we just keep clicking Metal Burst. How many have we got? We got 16 of them, so you can't attack Rhyperia, he's got to attack, and the, pot, the hypnosis hits again, okay, we should have taken our opportunity, we're dragging this out way too long. Um... We'll get this Metal Burst. We'll get the Metal Burst off, I'm sure. These are our last two Pokemon. We like. Imagine if we lost from this position. We'd have no one to blame but ourselves. I'm just adamant about getting the Metal Burst off. I hope you. I hope you don't mind, friends. I just feel like we need to. We need to for Rhyperia. Come on, scald the Rhyperia. He's gonna put us to sleep. I think he's gonna hypnosis us. Yeah. Does miss. Venusaur wakes up. Okay. Stealing our time, but then Venusaur did so well in this match. Can't really deny it. And uh, we do pick up a win. So massive, massive good games to Steve. Um, and uh, yeah, definitely check out his set of the battle. Like I say, all his socials are linked and his channel down in the description below. Thank you so much for tuning in, friends. We do pick up another victory. So that's great for our road ahead. The, the Southwest Skull Bunnies pushing on in the, uh, the X9 League. So we'll be back next week. Everything is planned. We'll have our analysis. Uh, we'll have our buddies in for analysis as well. And then we'll have the game following that. So thank you so much, friends, for tuning in. Have a great rest of your day, whatever you're up to. And uh, leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think of today's battle. And I'll see you all for another episode very soon. So until then, take care and bye-bye.